Hi, this is Hongshu from Motion Circles. In this video, I'll show you how I transform my animation from this to this. We'll cover some easy animation techniques, how I did this glowing ring animation, and some easy ways you can use to spice up your own animation. You can download the working file in the link below to follow along. Let's go. This video is inspired by Austin from Robbie Studio. He did a bunch of awesome animated shorts on his Instagram. When I saw those, I was really excited. I want to try it out using some of his techniques. I'll link his Instagram down below. You can check it out if you're interested. First, let's see how to animate these glowing rings. Here we go. We got these four rings in our composition and I've already got these four in gradient stroke. And these are the color combinations. Let's work on one at a time. First one is this inner one, which is in almost like a purple gradient. So let's go with this yellow one. We can solo this layer. First, let's go inside and go to the gradient stroke. Let's change the taper to start at 100% and then end at 25%. It's gonna give a taper end and the taper beginning to the stroke. So it looks like a ring that has a thinner starting point. And now we just want to add some wave underneath the gradient stroke as well. Let's do the amount to maybe 100%. Oh, that's too much. Let's do a 50% and then change the wavelength to maybe 500. So that, let's try 65. So that you can see this ring here, it's got some irregularity to it. It's not, in a constant stroke width and just add a bit more wobble to this ring when it's rotating next we just need to maybe do a rotation animation and a scale animation let's just do a one round rotation and then from the scale we can do like a 100 percent zooming down let's just right click go to keyframe assistant easy ease and then we can change the speed graph to an extreme easing in curve, something like this. So that's basically our animation. And the last thing we need to do is we need to add a deep glow effect from the effects and presets panel here. This is a paid plugin. You can see after we add that, it looks so premium. It's just got this very subtle glow to it. It doesn't work with the After Effects built-in glow. If we add the built-in glow, we can still maybe adjust the setting a little bit and maybe duplicate the glow. This is a glow effect that I have with the default glow. And then if I turn off these two settings and add the deep glow plugin, this is what it looks like. Let's go inside the first ring. Let's add in the taper, maybe 100%. And then end length is 25. Give it a 50% wave and then 500 wavelength. Basically the same setting for this yellow ring. And then I can add this deep glow to this inner ring as well. You can also adjust the stroke width underneath the gradient stroke. Right now, our stroke width is 10. If you have anything around 10, it should look pretty nice. If you have 20, it's going to be pretty thick as well. And that's how you make the glowing ring effect. After the first scene, I used the match cut transition to go from the first scene to the second scene. It is one of the most used techniques in modern motion design, and this is a magic to those silky, smooth transitions you see in all these amazing motion work. It's basically when your objects before and after the transition are following the same movement and you just do a cut when the motion happens. So it hides the transition since your animation is continuous. The transition looks really smooth and interesting to the eyes. To give a very easy example, over here we have two different shapes. Let's put them together in one position. And then we need to create a null object, parent the two layer to the null. Now let's animate the null position property. Let's just do a simple position change from here to here. 
and then let's ease the keyframe. Go to the graph editor. Let's do the speed graph curve like this. Now let's also animate the rotation property of these two objects. Let's set a rotation keyframe. And then from left to right, I want them to rotate maybe one round. Now all we need to do is to cut the two layers in the center over here. So we're using the null to control the animation of the two circles. And then we're cutting the two layers in the center over here when they travel midway. That's why we can that's why we can hide the transition between the two shapes and using the match cut technique. This is how we set up a match cut. You can see all the transitions here in this short video are using match cuts, so it makes the transition look more natural and super interesting when we stitch the scene together. Next, let me take you through each scene and I'll explain what I did to give you a better idea on how I animated this piece. You can see over here we only have five composition. Let's go inside the first composition. This is our first part of the animation where we have this ball shooting in from bottom and then it triggers these glowing rain to come up the screen. This animation is pretty straightforward. We only have this ball that shoots up with Y position animation and all these keyframes are there to make this ball do a bounce animation when it comes into the scene. The only thing we added is echo effect so that the ball has some stretch to it when it comes in. And then once it lands first, here in the center, we have this first ring that's been triggered. I already show you how to animate this ring. And then after the second bounce, it's gonna trigger more rings to coming into the scene. All these rings are parented to the main dots so that they all follow the same animation as the main dots. And that's how we animated the first scene here. If we go back to the second scene, when the ball drop in, we have this animation here where we have this ball turn into a white glowing leading ball. And then we have this triangular shape that's parented to the um, front ball as well. And then it just goes down like this. And we also animated some particles flowing upward to mimic that there's a lot of speed on this ball animation going downward. For the third frame, we have this ball dropping into the water scene. And we just basically use the wave warp effect to create this wave. And then we use a mirror effect to mirror it so that the ball coming into the water and the water wave is symmetrical. There's also some little circles as well when it comes in serving as secondary animation for the scene here to give it more details. After the ball come out of the water, we have this match cut to this next scene where we have this string attached to the ball and then just shoot the ball from right to the left with some echo effect on the ball. So over here, we only animated the path property. If I hit you on the keyboard, you can see we animated the path so that the string first at first is a straight line and then goes to be curved line and then shoot the ball to the left. After that, we have this transition with this solid color coming to the left and then the ball just also come to the left and then shoot to the right. And the last scene, we have this glowing ring again at the background. We have the shape animation of this rectangle as if it's been triggered from the previous scene from this single line opening up to be like a window shape. And then there's this aura glowing ball inside animating in the scene. And then we have the text animation. And to combine everything together, this is what our animation looked like. That's it with this video. Hope you learned something new. Please give me a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.